Hi, my name is Heather Larkin and I'm with Fairyography in Athens, Georgia. Usually I am taking portrait clients, but on my off time, I like to unwind by watching birds or going out and shooting macro. Since we're all stuck inside right now and we need a little bit of happiness, I thought I'd give you some tips on how to shoot macro in your own front yard. For me, photography is about color, texture, or subject matter, and the way the light interacts with all three of those. Macro adds to that by asking us what details we miss until we get closer. I don't see well without my contacts, so running around with a magnifying glass when I was little was something that I really enjoyed doing, just seeing all of the things that I would normally miss. Right now, I shoot with the Sony a7 III and the Sigma 70mm macro art lens. I feel like it's really important to have a, a dedicated macro lens when you're shooting macro. And right now, as of this video, the Sigma 70mm macro art lens is only 469 so why wouldn't you, really? Extension tubes are decent in a pinch, but the longer you use them, the more you will hate life. One of the things that I love most about this lens is that it has not only a manual focus and autofocus button, but it also has a close, middle, and full range of the lens focal option. So if you want to shoot portraits with this lens, you can put it on full, but if you want it to not look for things in the background and only shoot what's close up, just put it on the closest setting that you have. And it'll limit the range of the lens so that it will only um, focus on what's super close to the front of the element. When I'm out with my portrait clients, I am 100% manual only. But when I'm shooting macro, sometimes the depth of field is more important to me than the changing light conditions. So I will switch to aperture priority so that I can get what I get faster and not have to worry about changing camera settings as bugs are flying away, things like that. You can also do shutter priority if the things that you're photographing are moving faster than you want to fiddle with the camera. So I'm gonna go over some tips for shooting macro in your own backyard. I'm using my front yard today. So we'll go out in a little bit and see what we see. So this is my front yard. It's early morning and this is what we're working in today. I have a wooded backyard, but I don't really feel like going contending with ticks and snakes and yellow jackets and things like that today. So here we are. And you want to go out in the morning or the evening when the sun is low to the horizon, not only for better light, but also because you can see things that you wouldn't normally be able to see, like spider webs. When the light shines through the spider webs, you'll get a glinting uh, out of the corner of your eye that you normally wouldn't see, and that will lead you to very interesting pictures. Oh look, native azaleas that the deer haven't eaten. Yay. Our interesting texture. Well, this is my favorite rock in the garden. I'm sure you can see why. So as we can see, it being the morning, we have a little bit of dew all over the grass. This makes for great macro photos if you can get close enough and still enough. The glinting of the light through spider webs and it makes things easier to find. See all that right there?
There's caterpillars! I know from personal experience that the dew tends to collect on this plant. Oh, there's some. So we'll take a picture of that too. Well, normally the dew collects on this plant, but it seemed to be low last night. So it's on the clover underneath it instead. And there's a neat spider web there too. Let's see what we see here. One of the things that never fails to amaze me about macro photography is how small your subject can actually be. This little flower right here. There's my hand. It's about the size of my thumbnail, but with the magic of macro, you can take something this tiny and make it look like a real big full-size flower. Another example of this, these are the absolute tiniest little flowers. You see? So tiny. And yet, with macro photography, we can make them look big. Pay attention to your surroundings. You don't want to step in any poison ivy or on a snake or sit on a yellow jacket or in an ant pile or anything else. And I tell you, I have learned those <laughs> the hard way. This is what I mean about paying attention to surroundings. This is not poison ivy, but that is. Oh, there's Tick headed right towards me. He knows I'm here. Remember how I was talking about ants? I'm not sure what got these guys all worked up, but see how far out they go? If I were sitting right here, I would have sat right in them. Also, Stay quiet because the lizards and the bugs, they can hear you coming. So if you're making a bunch of noise or walking too quickly, you'll lose them before you even get a chance to see them and take a picture. One of the things that I actually do is I will roll my feet. So take your foot and roll it along the outside and put it down slowly. And you make much less noise when you're doing that. See? roll it instead of just tromping it down. If you roll it, make much less noise. I was taking a picture of this baby Katie did nymph on this flower and I had to sneeze and when I turned back around after doing that, he had vanished. This also goes for those with you or around you. If I go to the botanical gardens on field trip day, I'm guaranteed to find absolutely nothing. This frog that I photographed at the botanical gardens last year allowed me to get very, very close as long as I was slow. But the minute a child with a kickball ran behind me, he was gone. The way I find most of the creatures and critters that I photograph is basically by looking for what doesn't belong. And it sounds kind of strange to say that, but you definitely want to just pay attention to odd colors or some movement or things that don't normally, don't really go with what else is there. First, I don't want to step on anything, but also I want to see what the movement is. So I'll take my boots and slowly, oop, you can't see. There we go. See the spider? That's an easy way to find things that you wouldn't normally see. Looking around your house for spots that don't belong are also a good way to find interesting things, like jumping spiders.
Now this guy's gonna be really hard to see, so I'm hoping that the phone focuses here, but you can see, can you see those legs peeking out? It's a good way to find things. What's under there? Well, I'm looking at this spider underneath this leaf. Oh, it looks down and hello wasp. No thanks! I just turned something fall off the roof and into a plant. I have no idea what it was. I think it fell off the roof there. Let's see what we can find. Oh, I see. Hello. Are you afraid? Did you fall off the roof? The lizard fell off the roof. Hello there, sir. Are you okay after you fell off the roof? Yeah? You also want to sit in one place and just look around. A lot of times I will find something interesting to take pictures of that wasn't what I originally sat down for, but it's still very neat nonetheless. So you can see in this time lapse that I sat down for dewdrops, but started looking around and ended up with many things to photograph, including a spider. So I was watching this guy get to looking around and up here, see this guy? I would have walked right by him had I not stopped to look. This second time lapse was probably about 10 minutes just sitting here looking and listening and photographing dewdrops and snails and spider webs and things like that. While you're sitting and waiting on looking on things, it's also a great time to weed your garden. Ugh. Light and seasons change your results. The same subject in indirect light versus direct sunlight will look completely different. As it gets darker, sometimes you'll notice that the light is bluer and you want some more extra. So one of the tips that I use is take your phone light, just your phone, and you can use it for extra added light and depth and shadows, if you feel like. Also, you want to move your own angle when you're shooting macro, so change up your perspective. A dewdrop scene from the front is interesting, but what about from underside? Uh, the same applies for mushrooms. So a mushroom, we all know what a mushroom looks like, but what does it look like underneath? Put the camera down on the ground, shoot up. What does it look like? Also, when you're shooting at very narrow depth of field, you want to be able to get a good image in final, which means sometimes focus stacking, which means that you take a picture and another picture and another picture, and sometimes very many more, and stack them together in Photoshop 
to make a final image that has a really shallow depth of field, but your entire subject is in focus. So here's what I mean by focus stacking. A bunch of layers in Photoshop, and I just erase everything around where I don't want it. Photoshop will actually do this for you automatically, but I find it's not as accurate on handheld images, and I hate using a tripod. At some point, no matter what camera and what macro lens you have, it will struggle to find focus. So at that point, I will actually sit down and rock myself into focus where I want to be. See back and forward. Depending on your subject, you can also use this rocking technique to tell the camera what you want in focus. So you can pick just the tips of the flower, or we can pick the little spots. You also want to plan your point of focus. Somewhere at the front of the, Im of the subject for a longer subject makes more sense than if you put it at the back of the subject. Also, it's important to move and then take a shot and then move and take another shot, especially if you're shooting something that you could bump and knock off of its perch or scare away. So like do drops if you bump it with your elbow or your lens, sometimes it'll knock the dewdrop off the plant or like spiders, if you get too close to them, they will see you and <laughs> run away. So you want to uh, set up a shot, take it, move a little bit closer, take another shot, move a little bit closer and take another shot and keep going that way. At some point, the wind will make you want to throw your camera into the ocean. Or maybe traffic, if you don't have an ocean handy. I've just learned to not go out on windy days. It makes it nearly impossible to get what I want. You can also find some of the same species and occasionally some of the exact same creatures on plants day after day throughout months. This guy was on the same plant for the entire summer. Misting sprinkler heads and very fine foliage are a perfect combination as you can see in this fennel shot with all of the water droplets all over it. Don't be afraid to change your focus either. I went for this wisteria picture but ended up with this jumping spider instead. And remember to enjoy yourself. Listen to the birds, breathe deep, watch the animals for a little while, forget about your fears, and just have fun.